I'm Bree, and this is TJ. In 2017, we decided to break away from the norm and travel the U.S. in our custom 4x4 van and Airstream. We loaded up our two dogs, Madley and Brody, and hit the road. We quickly realized life on the road is full of surprises, and our name-embracing detours fit our new life perfectly. Please subscribe, and welcome to the adventure. We have come south along the eastern border of Oregon and landed in John Day. And today we are headed to Fossil Beds National Monument. Uh, TJ's back there filling up one of our big seven gallon blue water jugs because this is a very remote area. There, everything's pretty far away from one another and so we want to be prepared and have enough water in case we end up stranded out there. <laughs> and surprising to us, uh, this Fossil Beds National Monument allows dogs on the trails, which is very rare in, in any kind of national park. So, right. Uh, we called ahead and they said it was okay, so we're going to make sure we pack plenty of water for us and the animals yeah. this time. So. I think we might be ready to go. Close. All right, let's get out of here. I told TJ that he should stop wearing his mask under his chin, and his solution was that. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. I, I like, like that. You guys will be happy to see I'm putting some tennis shoes on, some hiking shoes. Against my will. <laughs> no, I, um... Actually, this place has got a lot of rattlesnakes, which has got me a little bit nervous. Not that I think these shoes are going to somehow magically save me, but... Those shoes will not save you from rattlesnakes. Okay, I understand. <laughs> it's caca and falling. <laughs> Alright, first things first, we are stopping for a little picnic lunch before we start exploring the park. Yep, we are at the Painted Hills unit. Yes! The drive getting here is one of Oregon's scenic drives, aptly named Journey Through Time. Yep, just the drive coming here is worth taking. Yeah, it was definitely well named. It, I could, as we were driving, I could envision all of these different time periods. I could see like dinosaurs walking through some of the areas and then other areas the I could totally... Cowboys through the canyons, yes. Exactly. So as we mentioned earlier, we have come to the John Day Fossil Bed National Monument. It's <laughs> a mouthful. <laughs> it is. Um, so there are actually three sections to this park. We are currently in the Painted Hills section. The other two units are called Sheep Rock and the Clarino unit. Yeah, and the Clarino unit is the only unit that actually has real fossils out in the wild. Right. It's exactly. the only place that the rock is hard enough that they don't get washed away by erosion. Right, exactly. Um, the sheep rock area, they have replicas. So you can go out there and kind of see what it would look like, but you won't be seeing the real thing. This entire area is extremely spread out. So just from where we're camped in John Day, to this point, Painted Hills was what, an hour and 40 minutes? Hour and 45 minutes. Um, and all of the units are close to an hour away from one another. Right. So it's not exactly easy to yeah. get to any of these. So what'd the ranger just tell us? She said that because we got a little bit of rain yesterday, and that it is overcast and not sunny, that it actually brings the red out, the, the darker reds out of the mountains here, or the hills here, and makes it even prettier. So she said, we picked a perfect day to come. We were a little disappointed it wasn't sunny, but she said we, uh, we chose well. As much as I'd like to say we planned it that way, <laughs> we just got lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally, totally planned. You know, it's funny though that 
we always want things to be just perfect you know we always want the perfect blue blue sky full Sunday and when that doesn't work out we always get a little disappointed but the the times that that has happened it's actually ended up being really beautiful not to mention it's not a million degrees out here which is a plus we've actually had a cold front blow in and it's only supposed to get to 80 today <laughs> this painted hills unit there are five hiking trails but they're all pretty short so the first four are anywhere between a quarter and a half a mile and then the fifth trail is I think maybe 1.6 miles really manageable easy to see just about everything this section of the park has to offer the hills colors tell a story 35 million years old this area was once a river floodplain, and as the climate changed between warm and wet to cool and dry, bands of red, yellow, orange, tan, pink, and gray were deposited to be eventually exposed by the tireless work of erosion. This landscape is a true testament to what time and nature can achieve. We rounded each colorful hill, half expecting a Martian or saber-toothed tiger to greet us, either or both seeming plausible given the scene. That is a wrap on Painted Hills. What's next? I guess we're headed back to Sheep something. Sheep Rock. Sheep Rock. <laughs> All right, well, we made it over to Sheep Rock. It was a really long ride. I may have taken a nap on the drive. <laughs> she always takes a nap on the drive. <laughs> can't help it. The visitor center is in this section of the park, um, but it's closed right now. But we called and spoke to a ranger just to get some recommendations, and we're actually doing her favorite trail, which is Island in Time Trail. It's a 1.3 mile trail. She did warn us that there are, we're crossing the first bridge now, she warned us that it's got 12 of these bridges that have metal grates you have to walk over that a lot of dogs don't like. Yeah, ours didn't seem to care. <laughs> ours literally just walked right over <laughs> it with no problem. So apparently though that becomes an issue for some dogs and so you have to carry your dog over that. <laughs> just finishing up our last hike. TJ I think said it best. He said that this place reminds him a lot of Death Valley and I agree with that. You get all the different colors and the rocks but you get the addition of fossils so that's always cool. It's free, it's dog friendly, it's got a lot going for it. It's just in the middle of nowhere of Oregon. Where have we come today? We are in Prairie City about 13 miles east of John Day. Yep. Uh, it just looks like a cute little town, so. I don't know that there's a whole ton of things to do here, but I'm just gonna walk around town, give us something to do for the day. discovered a very cool old Harley shop here in Prairie City and they specialize in metal engraving. Really, really amazing stuff. It was a cool shop, wasn't it? It was a really cool shop. Yeah. yeah. They had all kinds of neat stuff.
Well, unfortunately, I think we've come to the end of the line here in Prairie City. Yeah, it wasn't very far from the beginning to the end of the line. <laughs> it was so much for your good way to spend the day. I mean, it was a good way to spend maybe an hour. An hour. <laughs> <laughs> I think I walked in every store that was open and available to be explored. And to be fair, it is a very cute... Very cute little town. Yeah. yeah. Um, not a lot open right now. Yeah. What is open wasn't... Yeah, they're just didn't take long. yeah exactly uh, yeah so that's our tour of Prairie City. <laughs> so we've stopped at a place called Susie Q's Thrift Store um, here in John Day. It's actually listed as one of the like five things to do in John Day, and we actually came across this really cool old Singer Spartan sewing machine from the '60s. We like to do our own kind of crafts, I guess you would say. I don't think crafts is the right word, but like we made our own curtains and whatnot. And finding a good quality sewing machine nowadays is so hard. So we're really tempted to maybe buy the sewing machine. Oh yeah? Yeah, there's no way the table works for us. What do you think? just sitting outside in the weather at this thrift store, forgotten about, lonely, and we bought her. Bringing her home. She's awesome. We got her for the bargain price of... $15. <laughs> At what point do you plug it in? At point we're done with the bit. <laughs> you're real turd. <laughs> Which that the Singer badge one has. Oh. Um, it's got That's a little really push nice. button chrome uh, thing right about up in here somewhere. This Buttons is a zigzag. Style. See the zigzag on it? Oh yeah, I do. Here it is. And you can change this. And if you watch the needles, they go back and forth. So. See, they go sideways instead of straight. Oh, yeah. Or you can make it straight. What's funny here is that I don't know how to sew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's the only one in our house that knows how to use a sewing machine. I have tried. It was a disaster. It was awful. It was really bad. <laughs> but maybe I'll become better with a decent machine. Uh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I tried to teach her in the past and she blamed it on the machine, but it really came down to a matter of patience. I'm not known she, for my patience. <laughs> Where are we going to plug it in? As soon as you run the cord, we'll get me some thread. The light. Hmm. You sure your breaker's on? No idea. Did you trip a breaker or flip a breaker? No. Well, then it's probably not. Oh. All right. Breaker's on. The light. Woohoohoo. Power. Okay. We just got a fully functioning. Super cool. <laughs> Dusty. 50 plus year old singer 
sewing machine. Yeah, actually sews pretty nice too. Nice and flat. Stitches. Playing too much for 15 bucks, right? How about you do a happy dance? <laughs> Come on, let's see it. Let's see your happy dance. <laughs> <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> All right, well, it's our last night in John, John Day, Oregon. <laughs> yeah, we've been staying at the Grant County Fairgrounds here. And it's $35 a night. For, $30 a $30 night. $30 a night for full hookups. Uh, yeah, you know, it's one of those places that I would categorize as adequate. <laughs> it's an adequate place to stay overnight and for a few days. Right. Uh, but there is a county or No, it's state a state park. park. It was there like a... something holiday. Somebody's name with holiday in it. We'll put it down here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, the state park looks really nice. The only reason we chose not to stay there was because the reviews said that mosquitoes were bad and we're here in right. August, right. which we assumed that they would be bad right now. And honestly, I think when we looked into it, they didn't have availability for the length of time we were planning on being here anyway. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> that always factors into it as well. <laughs> what do you think of John Day, Oregon? Yeah, I think it's a really pretty place. Um, with not a lot to do. <laughs> with not a lot to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, we've enjoyed the few things we've done here, but it's not like there's a huge amount to choose from. Oh, hold on. Sorry, we had to stop for a poop break. <laughs> <laughs> not us, the dogs. Yeah. If you're like me, when I heard we were coming to John Day, my first question was, who is John Day? And why was the town named after him? And it actually is a fairly interesting story. So back in the 1800s, John Day was a hunter from Virginia and he was hired to do, to be part of an expedition heading west to Astoria, Oregon. And along the way, he was ambushed by Indians and <laughs> stripped naked and left at what was called the Mau Mau River. I'm assuming that's how it's pronounced. It's spelled M-A-U-M-A-U. -A -A I don't really know. Anyways, long story short, that story got around and everybody started referring to that river as the John Day River. Eventually, it got changed on the maps. The town was named after him. They built a dam and the dam was named after him. They even ended up naming the Fossil Beds National Monument after him. He's been memorialized through this whole area and the craziest part is he never even was actually in this area. They're not really sure that he'd ever actually stayed in this, the town of John Day. I don't know, I just find that so crazy because it almost it almost started from a joke, right? Like people were like, oh yeah, that's where John Day got, <laughs> got all his clothes taken from him and it just stuck. Um, so anyways, there is um, one more attraction here uh, that we have not had a chance to do yet. It's only, it's less than half a mile from the, the fairgrounds, the county park where we're camped. Uh, so we're gonna walk over there now just to check it out. Not. This used to be a bustling Chinatown. Yeah, there used to be a lot of mining in this part of the state and uh, they hired a lot of Chinese laborers. In the mid 19th century, Chinese laborers flocked to this area and there were a couple of men, let me see if I can remember their names, Doc Hay and I think it's Long On, started this Chinese apothecary behind us and it became sort of the hub of this Chinatown. It became a place where the Chinese could come and feel welcome and get the things that they were used to from their home country here in the middle of this strange land. At the turn of the 20th century, the Chinese uh, had left this area. They were no longer, there was no longer work here for them. Right. The mining had played out and they started moving on. Right. Exactly, but the apothecary actually had become really popular with the locals and they ended up staying on here in central Oregon um, after the Chinese had left. At Doc Hayes' death in 1952, he actually gifted this building and this place to the city of Hood River. Uh, and then 
they just completely forgot about it. It wasn't until 1967 when they were looking at their records um, to see, they were trying to find a place to put a city park. They realized that they own this building <laughs> and um, came and checked it out and realized that they had... It was like a time capsule when they walked in. That the shelves were still full right? all the stuff was still in there everything was and left exactly as it had been yeah, when it hadn't they been were touched there. in years so. yeah exactly so they ended up turning it into a state park renovating it turning it into a state park it's actually now a national historic landmark as well yeah. um, and normally under cir uh, normal circumstances you can tour the inside right. of this building and see that time capsule um, which would be amazing but unfortunately it's closed right now <laughs> Something completely and totally unexpected here um, in super rural, small town, sleepy John Day, Oregon. But yeah. something really cool. So if you happen to find yourself passing by. Yeah. I mean, this is, if you're coming out of Bend, this is on the way to Idaho. So if you're coming through this area, definitely stop and check it out. Join us next week as we make our way into Idaho, where unfortunately our first stop is to an auto repair shop. A special shout out to our patrons whose support help make these videos possible. If you'd like to help support the production of our videos, please head over to patreon.com forward slash embracing detours. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.